What are you doing for fun today? It's a great idea to have something fun to do every single day. It might be as simple as just chatting to a friend. I'm Carol O'Halloran and welcome to Over 50 So What? How ready are you for a fire breaking out at home? We discuss a home fire escape plan with Fire Rescue Victoria. Don't miss it, it could save a life, even yours. Get active with the five minute fitness and then we're going to have a quick chat to members of the men's shed and some over 50s playing snooker just for fun. Keep looking when cooking. Turn off the heat before you sleep. Stick it, don't flick it. These are important slogans from Fire Rescue Victoria to keep us all safe, fire safe at home. And today we're at the Fire Services Museum Victoria and we're speaking with Darren McQuaid. Hi Darren, welcome to Over 50 So What? Great to have you on the show. Thank you. A very, very important topic. We're heading into another big summer, it's saying, and El Nino or something's coming up. But today we're not talking about bushfires, we're talking about fire safety at home because that is a big issue as well. Can you give us the four basic safety tips for being fire safe at home? Fire safety in the home is really important. Unfortunately, we see too many preventable fire fatalities each year uh, from house fires. So the, the top four things to remember for um, fire safety in the home would be to ensure that you've got working smoke alarms. It's probably the number one message that we would ask people to check their smoke alarms, make sure they're working. The second point to remember is to just check your fire risks around the home. So make sure that the, the cooktop is clear of any flammable material, that you're charging things on non-flammable surfaces, and, and other things such as electrical appliances, make sure they're in good working order. The third thing to remember would be to have a home fire escape plan and practice it regularly. A home fire escape plan is, is a simple document that shows you the, the two ways out of each room of your home where your meeting point is, typically it's the letterbox, and that should be practised with all family members so that if a fire does start, everyone knows what to do. When people don't know what to do, that's when they start to panic. So we, we ensure that, um, we, we like to ensure that people know what to do where there's a fire. And the fourth thing to do is, if there is a fire, is to get out and stay out. Call triple zero. If you do happen to be competent in the use of a fire extinguisher or a fire blanket, that would be great, but make sure they're not stored too close to the, the cooktop. But the main message is to get out and stay out and call triple zero. Yes, great to, great to have those tips, get out and stay out. Um, what happens if you can't get out of the house? So the first thing to remember if you can't get out of the house is to try and confine the fire away from you. So that would be close the door, um, try and um, well, call triple zero for a start and make sure you let the fire brigade know where you are in the home. Um, get, it, get down low out of the smoke and try and alert people to where you are, so banging on the window. Now, ideally, if you can't get out of the door, the window is the second exit point for um, you know, getting to a safe place. Sometimes the windows can't be open, but we should be trying the windows. If you're trapped and can't get out of the room, close the door, ensure you call triple zero as quickly as possible alert people to where you are by banging on the window. If you can't open the window, ideally you actually use the window to escape if you can. They're probably the, the main points to remember. And if you're on the second floor? So if you're on the second floor, similar thing, um, alert people to where you are, call triple zero. And again, try and isolate the fire away from you by closing the door, putting a, a towel or some clothing down so the smoke doesn't come into the room and, and just alert people to where you are and get down low. All right, so let's assuming every house in Australia has got a smoke alarm or two, would that be the case? Most houses would have a smoke alarm? Uh, by law, every home has to have a working smoke alarm. The, the legislation changes slightly in each, in each state, uh, but at a minimum, certainly in Victoria, um, you need a, at least one smoke alarm between the bedrooms and the rest of the home and on each level. Now, some 
alarms have got batteries, some are hardwired. What do we do to look after our smoke alarms? Look, every smoke alarm has a battery and it's typically as a backup. Um, in Victoria since 1997 and most of Australia since the 90s, require every new home to have uh, their smoke alarms connected to 240 volts and we call it hardwired. They, those detectors will also have a battery backup. Some of them, the older ones, will have a nine volt battery that's changed every year. Some of them, even better, have a, a 10 year lithium battery that does, never needs to be changed. In, in fact, what we would recommend is that after 10 years, the actual smoke alarms change. That's regardless of what um, powers the smoke alarm, change it every 10 years. And we're supposed to regularly dust it? Yeah, so we recommend that people test their smoke alarm once a month, uh, but also dust it or vacuum it every 12 months because they, they can get um, dust particles in them and they can give false alarms. So we'd recommend to, to avoid the false alarms that you dust them or vacuum them every 12 months. And how do you test them? So a simple way, each smoke alarm uh, facing the floor is will have a, a test button best way to do it is not to get up on a ladder, but get a broomstick or something that can reach the button. Hold the button until it sounds. Some will just have a beeping noise and the modern ones at the moment actually talk back to you saying that they are testing. That's the simplest way, but every month grab a broomstick, test it and, and make sure it's working. There's no point having a smoke alarm if it's not going to work. So a lot of people watching the show will be looking after elderly relatives too, or they might be popping in and caring for someone occasionally. So that's something they should put on their regular routine. It's a great point. I had this myself where looking after elderly parents, um, make sure that you take some responsibility for their care. They can't test the smoke alarm or they can't change it if it needs to be changed or the battery. So as adult children, we should be taking responsibility for them and making sure that they're safe. What I did for my parents was to ensure that they had smoke alarms in every bedroom and living room of their home and we tested them regularly. And that's where the legislation's heading, we hopefully. Well, in Victoria at the moment, we've got legislation that just requires a smoke alarm between the bedrooms and the, the, the rest of the home on every level. Um, the research shows that 72% of fire fatalities and their preventable fire fatalities occur either in the bedroom or the living room, which is quite a, a, you know, an amazing fact, um, unfortunately. But what it has led to us doing is recommending that people have smoke alarms in every bedroom and living room. And you were mentioning before one of the biggest causes of fires were people falling asleep while they're smoking, so that's in the bedroom or in the living room. That's right, and I think that leads to the statistic of 72% of fire fatalities occurring in bedrooms or living rooms, and a large percentage of those is through smoking materials that drop onto the bed or the couch when someone's either tired, um, you know, a little bit sleepy, and they drift off to sleep. And, and we have seen fatalities where literally the couch is pretty much the only thing that you know, it's called fire um, and, and people have died on their couch. Now, a lot of people watching will have children and grandchildren, there may be babysitting for grandchildren. Um, what's our responsibilities as grandparents if we're looking after grandchildren in, if a fire happens? Well, I think as, as any um, person looking after children who often can't make good decisions for their own safety, we've got to take that responsibility. So whether you're the parent or the grandparent, and what I try and do is make it fun. So help your grandchildren understand. So develop a home of, um, escape plan with the children. So sit down um, and draw a plan of the house and the exits of the house and practice that. Get the children to get down low and go, go, go um, out to the exit. Um, get them to test the smoke alarm. And, and, and I, I think by probably even making the children kind of responsible for smoke alarm testing so that each time they come, they ask you as the grandparent, have you checked the smoke alarm? So get them involved and make it a bit of fun. Um, but things such as keeping pot handles turned in so they don't get scolds, um, it's things like removing matches or lighters or anything that they could get hold of because children do experiment and, and, and play at times um, and we just need to make them safe. So think of, you know, walk around your home and put yourself in the child's shoes for a moment and think about what are the things that might be risky and try and remove those things. So some of the key points we've talked about today is make sure you've got a working smoke alarm. One of the biggest areas is the bedroom um, um, be, and the living room. Be especially vigilant if you're smoking um, and test your alarms regularly. And if you hear the alarm, get out and stay out. Get out. Get down low and go, go, go. And call triple zero. And call triple zero. That's it. Fire. That's it. 
Okay, thanks a lot, Darren. You're welcome. chair for support, grab a chair, or just move where you are. Check the floor around you. No cords, no mats, no dogs, no cats, and walk. And we do four taps. Eight walks. And tap. Back we go. That's it. Last set. And tap. Last one. And now we're going to do four walks, two taps. Let's do it. Walk, 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 and tap, tap. Walk, 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 and tap. Strut your stuff. Tap, tap. Walk, 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 and tap. Yeah. Keep it going. Okay, now hold it there. We're going to step forward, tap, back, tap. I'll do it slowly. Forward, tap, back, tap. Forward, tap, back. Now speed it up. Forward, tap, back, tap. Forward, tap, back, tap. Forward, tap, back, tap. I'm just showing you sideways so you can see what we're doing. Forward, tap, back, tap. Forward, tap. Now, we're gonna shimmy, shimmy, and back, shimmy, and back, shimmy. Yeah, shake it, guys and gals. And then we're gonna add a clap. Shimmy, and clap. That's it, shimmy, and clap, shimmy, and clap, shimmy. And clap. shimmy. And clap, shimmy, and clap. Four more, four, and three, and two, and one. Okay, back to eight walks. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and tap. Back we go. And tap it. Just do freestyle with your arms. You can put a little bounce in your step. And walk. Yeah. And tap. Okay, let's cut it in half. Four. Walk, walk, walk. And tap. Tap. Walk, walk, walk. And tap. Tap, walk, 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 and tap. Woohoo! Just watching out for the rabbit holes. Faye said she's getting hot. Last one. Now we're going to do to the other side. Forward, tap back, tap, so we go forward, tap, back, tap, forward, tap, back, tap, forward, tap, should, should be on the other leg, that's, I'm just showing you sideways, forward, tap, tap, forward, tap, that's it, forward, tap, back, tap, forward, tap, 
back. Tap. Okay, ready. And shimmy. And I threw the clapping already. That's it, shimmy. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff, everybody. Five minutes a day. That's all you need. Have you ever thought about trying snooker? I mean, I remember way, 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 way back, I played it about 40 odd years ago. And today I'm gonna to give it another go because snooker is one of the many activities offered by life activities clubs. The show is called Over 50 So What, but John just reminded me it should be called Over 80 So What. It should be, yeah, <laughs> since I'm over 80. <laughs> so, just, uh, so you're 88 at the moment. I will be in two weeks. Oh, excellent. So yeah. what would you say to people, maybe they're 80, maybe they're 87, what would you say to them if they've never played snooker before about why they should come and join you? It keeps you fit. You know, you, it doesn't keep you fit physically all that much, but you've got to think, you know, and then you've got to add up if you make a shot. You've got to add it all up, you know, so it, uh, that's good. So you normally add it up in your head, you don't actually use no, a calculator? No, we've got a scoreboard here. Yeah. You've got a scoreboard and you just... And okay. then, uh, yeah, but you still got to add up. All oh, right. Yeah, but it's only small numbers, you know, <laughs> not hundreds of numbers. So what would you say to a beginner who's a bit anxious about getting out of the house and, and trying it for the first time? Well, you've got to push yourself, maybe, you know, because well, I've played it before. For me, it was no big deal. Um, it, it, it's, it's all starting to come back again, really, a little bit. And you'll be really patient with them if they come to this club? Oh, yes, yeah. And you'll look after them? Yeah, we've got a couple of ladies here. They started playing this year. Yeah, they've been coming on quite well, actually. Uh, you must be a good mentor. No, maybe a better teacher than a player. <laughs> Hi, Jess. Um, I hear you're quite a young one compared to John. You're a few years younger. Uh, yes, but I'm still one of the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you get out of it? I challenge myself. Um, not really interested in winning, but um, I try to do my best all the time. So. That's what I get out of it. Um, I have emphysema, so it's very limited what I can do physically. So it suits me to just walk around a table and and uh, take aim and, and uh, um, yeah, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so you can recommend it to anyone else who might have emphysema. Oh, absolutely, and can't yeah. Do, you know, like a lot of physical it, activity. Any anyone can do it, and it's it's wonderful to see uh, that we now have a few girls playing as well. Um, so yeah, it's going well. So what would your tips be for someone like myself who's a brand new beginner that hasn't only played it once in their life before, or maybe they've never ever played before, a beginner to try it, what tips would you give them? Oh, just come along and, and uh, try it out. Um, I'd be happy to play with uh, anyone who's learning. Um, yeah, I, I, as I said, I'm not really interested in winning. I just enjoy the game. So uh, anyone would be welcome. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to teach. So if someone's a bit nervous, because a lot of people, you know, say, well, I don't know anybody. You mm. know, I'm a bit, they're a bit nervous about me being with strange people and trying something different. What would you say to them? Ah, <laughs> um, I would say that we are very welcoming here. Uh, we would welcome anyone. Um, there's really nothing to uh, to fear. We are not uh, playing for money. It's not competitive. <laughs> <laughs> it's just for fun. For all you men watching today, have you thought about doing some woodworking or doing something with your hands, some home maintenance? Maybe you just want to get out of the house and meet some other blokes in your local area. Well, today we're going to find out more about what happens in a men's shed. And we're at the Chelsea Men's Shed Open Day. You ladies watching, there's a program for women also, so you don't miss out.
To tell us more, we're chatting to the president of the Chelsea Men's Shed, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Carol. How are you? Pleased to meet you. Yeah, so each shed has different activities. They might have walking groups or cycling groups. Now, what are the benefits of someone coming along? I think it's just the social aspect. Um, as I said, people who feel isolated or feel as though they need to get out from the home can come down and um, meet with other gentlemen of similar age and ilk and um, just have a chat and participate in those activities. So if you like gardening, uh, come down and do some gardening, that type of thing. So the benefits are really just sort of getting out amongst other people and having a chat and feeling good about yourself. So for blokes sitting at home watching, he's on his own, he says, oh, I don't know about going on my own, I won't know anyone, what would you say to them? Uh, probably the same for every, every one of our members that's come down. It's, I suppose, just having the little bit of confidence to come down. We're very social and very welcoming. Um, a lot of the guys here will just come and have a, a chat and just a coffee. Um, we have one particular member who was fairly active, but more recently has slowed down a bit. But he still comes down, has a coffee, has a chat, um, and that's all he likes to do. So it, it's easy. And we're a welcoming group. So I would say most of our members, or all of our members, uh, will make others welcome. So if someone hasn't done any trades before, they've never done any woodworking, maybe they've only you know worked in an office situation, um, how would they feel coming down? Uh, we have a sort of introductory session for them, so we're very conscious of safety. Some of the power tools are, can be quite destructive if you get hands and fingers in them. So we uh, will teach them how to use the power tools. Um, if they're still uncomfortable, a lot of a lot of the guys will actually sort of use those tools for them, cut the timbers up, and get the and, and they just do the assembly work. So it's a matter of sort of having confidence in yourself that you're able to use those power tools, but yeah, we'll help train them in those aspects. So what hours are you open? I mean, can people who are still working full time come? At the moment we're three days a week, so Wednesday 9 till about 1.30, Thursday same time, and Saturday mornings 9 till about 12.30. So Saturday mornings for those who are working. Uh, when we move to the new premises we'll probably be doing um, more afternoon sessions, so as our membership increases we'll need to sort of roll into either more days a week or more hours during the day. So. Now we've been talking a lot about men, but a lot of uh, people don't realise that a lot of sheds have programs for women. And we do too. So <laughs> on a Tuesday uh, we've got a ladies program that's been around for close to 12 months now. Um, and the premise is that we have a three week session where the ladies will come in and learn how to use some of the power tools. Um, then after that, uh, we let them loose and they make and work on their own projects. So that sounds a bit <laughs> with dangerous. With a little bit of control. <laughs> with a bit of control. So yeah, no, the, uh, that's been uh, quite successful for us. A um, couple of the guys, Ron and Rob, uh, do the training, um, and that's that's great work for for the girls. So now we're at the Chelsea Shed, but this show goes out all around the Australia. Um, where would someone find a men's shed near them? Okay, there's a site called. Uh, AMSA or the menshed.org and there's a search button that says find me a shed and it'll find one of 12,000 sheds in Australia. So there's quite a few to choose from. 12,000? Sheds across Australia, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and growing. Oh my goodness me. Yeah. Get off your ass and come down and join the shed. I probably can't say ass, so get off your backside. <laughs> Turn off the heat before you sleep. Keep looking when cooking. And of course, have a home fire escape plan. Check out Fire Rescue Victoria for more information or go to our website. Keep active, please. There's more fitness videos on YouTube over 50 So What. Connect with us on socials, Facebook and Insta. And also check out the Men's Shed or Life Activities Clubs for more fun things to do. You'll find guest info on our website as well. Keep active, keep fire safe and find something fun to do every day. I'm Carola Halloran, your positive aging warrior. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration.
I'm Carol, over 50, so what? <laughs>